Today we're at one of my customers' pools. This pool was replastered about two years ago by Alan Smith. Um, and today we're gonna do, as you can see right now, how this pool looks really good as it is right now. So we're gonna test borates in this pool to see how much more sparkling and how much uh, more silky. We don't even quite have a silky look right now, but once the borates goes in, we're gonna also add a silky look to this pool. Um, so let's get started on that. And, and borates is good for basically uh, stabilizing your pH. It's gonna be a pH buffer. It's gonna stop that pH from rising up so much. It, uh, it's also an algistat, which is really good, so it's gonna help prevent algae. And it makes your water sparkling, silky smooth. It also helps protect the, uh, the chlorine a little bit more, because you go from a conditioner, instead of 7.5% of chlorine per conditioner, we can go down to 5% now for chlorine uh, per your conditioner. So that also helps out quite a bit too. So let's get started on this. And the way you figure this out, you, go on, you can go and figure out your gallons. I got 14,000 gallons in this pool right now. So what you do, since we're using sodium tetaborate, what we're gonna do, sodium tetaborate is 90 ounces per 10 ppm in a 10,000 gallon pool. And then you have to add in your acid too. So to figure out that, you would take 14,000 gallons, 1.4, times five, which is 50 ppm, times your 90 ounces, that gives you an amount, and then you divide that by 16, and that gives you your pounds. Now on the acid, we're gonna have to add acid to this because this is about a 13 pH, so we have to basically offset the rising um, pH by acid. And to figure that out, you take uh, your 1.4, you take the figure that you just did, it came to 630. Now you take the 630, and you divide that by 1.6, and then you divide that by 128, which is 128 ounces to a gallon. That's how you figure out your acid, and that comes to three gallons of acid by Hassa. Um, okay, now let's get started on this. The way you would do this is basically, you can, you can use a brush too. I'm gonna use my hammerhead because the hammerhead spreads around a lot better. But yeah, you can also use a brush doing this. You take it, and you want to put about half of it in the pool, spread it around. Okay, now what I do is I take my hammerhead with no bag on it, drop it in there, And you can see how much this is gonna move that sodium tetraboard around. And you just take the hammerhead and move it around. And you can see how it's just moving it around. This hammerhead's got a 30 pound thrust on it. So, I mean, it's, it's doing what it needs to do. Main thing is you just don't want to let this sodium Tetaborate sit, or boric acid, or any of these products just sit on the plaster. So we just keep moving it around. Okay, now what you wanna do is add half of the acid. Cause I only put in half of the sodium tetaborate. So now what I do is I'll bring this, bring this over here and just let it sit like this. So it's moving the water around like this. And if you don't have this, like I said, just pour in your acid slowly, brush it around, move it around, just get it moving. And then I'll just pour in the acid slowly to move this acid around. So it doesn't go to the bottom and just sit there and create a low pH. Okay, so that's one. And now we'll go on a half. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, and I'll just leave it sit here for a little bit and move it around a little bit. Just make sure that acid is all the way mixed up into this water. You can probably already tell, it's only got half of the boards in there right now, but you can already tell, see this, the silkiness of this already? You can see how much, it's starting to change the look already of this pool. Okay, now let's go and add the rest. And if you take one of these DE cups, about a half inch from the top is three pounds. Okay, and that's how you would figure it out. Using the hammerhead just makes the job a little bit faster. You don't have to have it, but it does make it faster. Like I said, the, uh, the major thing is just, just try not to let it sit on the bottom. You can already tell just by looking at this pool. You can already tell it just looks already silkier. This pool is going to look really awesome when we get it done. We're going to be saving on chlorine costs because we only need that 5% per our conditioner instead of the 7.5%. If you got uh, some problem pools, you're always getting a little bit of mustard algae and some dead spots, throw in the borates. And that's gonna help that problem out a lot. Now, if you're going to use boric acid, boric acid, you do not need to use the acid with boric acid. Now, boric acid, instead of using 90 ounces, you would use 76 ounces. So you do the math the same way. 1.4 times my 5, which is 50 ppm, times 76 ounces. And that gives you total ounces. And then you divide that by 16. And that's how you would come up with your boric acid. And you don't need, um, like I said, you don't need to figure in the acid. Okay, now let's use the rest of the acid here. And I tested this pool before I did this, just to make sure, because if I had a, a low pH in this pool, in a lower alkalinity too, I wouldn't be adding the full three gallons of this pool, because that would be too much. So what I would do, I would just back off maybe by uh, half a gallon, and, uh, and see where that gets it, because you can always come back the next day and adjust your chemicals. Tested it with my Taylor test kit there, and uh, this pool, this pool was a 0.13, so that's really good. Let me move the acid around, make sure it's not uh, gonna sit there at the bottom. Yeah, you can already tell this water already looks, and this is just right now. In a couple of days, this pool is gonna look really, really good. And I got a feeling the sodium to the board is gonna outdo me on my pool. Day two of the borates. We're gonna check out the pool right now and see how it looks. <laughs> 